Worship Brother David, we are ready to go. Okay. Worshipful Brother David. No. Brethren and friends, please welcome into the virtual lodge the master and installing officers. Good afternoon, brethren and friends, and welcome to our 109th installation of officers and our very first and hopefully last installation by Zoom. My name is Robert Scharf. I am the current master of San Dimas Masonic Lodge. As you all know, the COVID-19 pandemic changed the manner in which our society can socialize, including our lodge activities. Consequently, the Grand Master has allowed us to meet virtually in order to install our officers for the ensuing Masonic year. First, let us agree on some Zoom protocols. Everyone will be muted by the virtual coordinator except those with speaking parts in today's ceremony. During introductions, you may be asked to unmute in order to identify yourself. Once done, please remute yourself. You may use either gallery or speaker view on your Zoom. Please do not chat with the installing officer or master of ceremonies. As the current retiring master for this year, I would like to introduce the installing team who will install the officers for the 2021 Masonic term. They are Worshipful Brother Raymond Foster, past master as virtual coordinator. Worshipful Brother Joseph Musgrove, past master as installing chaplain. Worshipful Brother David Ogle, past master and recipient of the Hiram Award as installing master of ceremonies and very worshipful brother Jack M. Rose, past master, Hiram Award recipient, recipient of the Grand Master's Youth Support Award and past Grand Lecturer of the Grand Lodge of California as an installing officer. Very worshipful Jack, please begin the installation of officers for the 2021 Masonic term. Thank you, worshipful master. Brethren, brother, for the Master of Ceremonies, are the officers of this lodge, lately chosen, present, and ready to be installed in their respective offices? They, they are within the virtual lodge, Worshipful Sir, and await your pleasure. In accordance with the teachings of our institution, it is our duty, before entering upon any great or important undertaking, to invoke the aid and blessing of God. Let us therefore reverently unite with our chaplain in an address to the throne of grace. Great architect and ruler of the universe, we reverently invoke thy blessing at this time. Grant us thine aid in our present undertaking, that all we may do shall be done with an eye single to thy service and to the good of Freemasonry. May those who are now able to be invested with the government and conduct of this lodge be endued with the wisdom to instruct their brethren in their duties. And may they be continually guided by the unerring counsel which thou hast given in the great book of nature and revelation. May brotherly love, relief, and truth always prevail among the members of this lodge. May they be impressed with the comprehension of their duty to thee and to each other, that this lodge may be the means of lasting good in this community. And to thee we shall ascribe all the honor and glory. Amen. So more to be. More to be. With your right hand over your heart, kindly repeat with me the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United of the States, States of America, America. And, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation Christ under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. For the Master of Ceremonies, you may begin. Worshipful Sir, the officers of this lodge, lately chosen, are present and ready to be installed in their respective offices. 
You will then present the brother who has been appointed Tyler of this lodge. Worshipful sir, I present to you for installation, Worshipful Brother Golish, who has been appointed Tyler of this lodge. Worshipful Brother Golish, you've been appointed Tyler of this lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel and implement of your office. Please put on your jewel. As the sword is placed in the hands of the Tyler to enable him effectually to guard against the approach of Cowans and eavesdroppers, and suffer none to pass or repass except such as are duly qualified, so should it admonish us to set a guard over our thoughts, a watch at our lips, and post a sentinel over our actions, thereby preventing any approach of every unworthy thought and deed, and preserving consciences void of offense toward God and man. You will now take your proper place. For the Master of Ceremonies, you will present the organist. Worshipful Sir, I present to you for installation Worshipful Brother Miller, who has been appointed organist of this lodge. Worshipful Brother Miller, you've been appointed organist of this lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel of your office. Please put on your jewel. The lyre is the jewel of your office, and as it is an emblem of music, it should continually remind us that as harmony is essential in the liberal arts and sciences which it symbolizes, so should harmony continue to be the strength and support of all societies, especially of ours. Let harmony prevail. For the master of ceremonies, you'll present the junior steward. Worshipful sir, I present to you for installation, worshipful brother Foster, who has been appointed junior steward of this lodge. Worshipful brother Foster, You've been appointed a steward of this lodge and I will now instruct you in your duties. In olden times, your province was to superintend and provide for the festivals of the craft, to assist in the collections of dues and subscriptions, to keep an account of the expenses for refreshment and see that the tables were properly supplied and every brother suitably provided for. In modern times, however, the provisions for actual refreshment have diminished and your principal functions will now be to prepare candidates for admission and to perform those duties which Masonic custom is assigned to you on days of procession. Receive the jewels of your office together with a white rod. Please put on your jewel. You will now repair to your proper place. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you'll present the Marshal. Worshipful Sir, I present to you for installation, Worshipful Brother Van Carnes, who has been appointed Marshal of this Lodge. Worshipful Brother Van Carnes, you've been appointed Marshal of this Lodge and you will now be invested with the jewel and symbol of your office. Please put on your jewel. The baton is an emblem of command and as sufficiently significant of your duties. 
You will, under the direction of the master, take charge of all processions of the lodge. And you will en en you enjoin that the proper performance of many of your ceremonies will depend upon the manner in which your duties are discharged. You will now take your proper place. For the master of ceremonies, you'll present the senior deacon. Worshipful sir, I present to you for installation, Brother Pilato, who has been appointed senior deacon of this lodge. This certificate vouches for the proficiency of the junior deacon. Brother Pilato, you've been appointed senior deacon of this lodge, and you now be infested with the jewel of your office. Please put on your jewel. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you'll present the junior deacon. Worshipful sir, I present to you for installation, Brother Benamahu, who has been appointed junior deacon of this lodge. Brother Batmanu, you've been appointed junior deacon of this lodge, and you'll now be invested with the jewel of your office. Please put on your jewel. Those jewels indicate that it is your providence to attend upon the master and wardens and act as their proxies in the active duties of this lodge. It will be your special duty, Brother Senior Deacon, to carry orders from the worshipful master in the east to the senior warden in the west and elsewhere about the lodge is required. Attend to all alarms at the door of the preparation room. Receive and conduct candidates. Introduce and accommodate visiting brethren. You, Brother Junior Deacon, to carry messages from the senior ward in the west to the junior in the south, and elsewhere about the lodge is directed. Attend to all alarms at the door and see the lodge duly tiled. Those rods, my brothers, distinct of your office, are now entrusted to your care. And now, believing from your past deportment in the lodge that your duties will be discharged with ability and zeal, I dismiss you to your respective places. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you will present the chaplain. Worshipful Sir, I present to you for installation, Worshipful Brother McDonald, who has been appointed chaplain of this lodge. Worshipful brother, that holy book which adorns our sacred altar is the great light in masonry and forever sh sheds its benignant rays upon every lawful assemblage of free and accepted masons. Teach us from its life-giving precepts. Invoke upon our labors the blessings of that divine being whose infinite goodness it so fully reveals and unfolds to us. And guide us by its lessons of wisdom and truth. And you have, it will have faithfully fulfilled your important trust. It is your duty to perform those solemn services, which, should, which we should constantly render unto our great creator and reverently to allure to brighter worlds and lead the way. And thus, by elevating our thoughts, strengthening our virtues and purifying our minds, prepare us for that mission into the celestial society of the blessed in the realm of life and light eternal. It is fitting that an emblem of the sacred volume should be the jewel of your office. And with it, you will now be invested. Please put on your jewel. <clears throat> you will now take your proper place. For the Master of Ceremonies, you present the Secretary-Elect.
Worshipful Sir, I present to you for installation, Brother Johnson, who has been elected secretary of this lodge. Brother Johnson, you've been elected secretary of this lodge and you'll now be invested with the jewel of your office. Please put on your jewel. I am persuaded that in your hands, the pens will make an enduring record, not only to the praise, but also to the welfare of the lodge. It is your duty to observe the will and pleasure of the worshipful master, keep a faithful record of all faithful record of all things proper to be written. Transmit a copy of the same to Grand Lodge when required. Receive all monies from the brethren. Pay the same to the treasurer and take his receipt, therefore. You will now take your proper place. For the Master of Ceremonies, you will present the treasurer elect. Worshipful Master, I present to you for installation Brother Letzler, who has been elected treasurer of this lodge. Brother Letzler, you've been elected treasurer of this lodge, and you will now be invested with the jewel of your office. Please put on your jewel. The keys have a twofold significance. They are instruments to bind as well as to make loose, to make fast as well as to open. They will never, I am confident, be used by you in any other manner than that which the Constitution, laws, and regulations of the lodge shall direct. You are to receive all money from the secretary, keep a just and accurate account thereof, and pay the same out by order of the worshipful master with the consent of the lodge. You will now take your proper place. For the Master of Ceremonies, you'll present the Junior Warden-Elect. Worshipful Master, I present to you for installation, Brother Schmidt, who has been elected Junior Warden of this Lodge. This certificate vouches for his proficiency. Brother Schmidt, you've been elected junior warden of this lodge, and you'll now be invested the jewel of your station. Please put on your jewel. The plum, my brother, admonishes us to walk uprightly in our several stations, to hold the scales of justice in equal poise, to observe the just medium between intemperance and pleasure, and to make our passions and prejudices coincide with the line of our duty. To you is committed the superintendence of the craft during the hours of refreshment. It is necessary, therefore, that you should practice moderation and discretion in the indulgence of your own inclinations, and that you are to carefully observe the means of refreshment and make sure that they are not converted to improper or excessive use. Your regular and punctual attendance is particularly requested, and I have no doubt that you will faithfully execute the duties which you owe to your present appointment. Look well to the South. <laughs> Brother Master of Ceremonies, you will present the Senior Warden-Elect. Worshipful Sir, I present to you for installation Brother Smith, who has been elected Senior Warden of this Lodge. He is of good morals, true and trusty, and possesses the love and confidence of his brethren. This certificate vouches for his proficiency.
Brother Smith, you have been ele elected senior ward of this lodge and you now be invested with the jewel of your station. Please put on your jewel. The level, my brother, demonstrates that we are descended from the same stock, that we partake of the same nature and share the same hope, and that although distinctions among men are necessary to pre preserve subordination, yet no eminence of station should make us forget that we are brethren. For he who is placed on the lowest spoke of fortune's wheel may be entitled to our regard, because a time will come, and the wisest know not how soon, when all distinctions save that of goodness shall cease. And death, the mighty leveler of human greatness, reduces to the same state. Your regular attendance at our stated meetings is essential. In the absence of the master, you are to govern the lodge. In his presence, you are to assist him in the government of it. I firmly rely on your knowledge of masonry and attachment to the lodge for the faithful discharge of the duties of this important trust. Look well to the West. By the Master of Ceremonies, you now present the, master, the brother who has been elected to discharge the important duties of master of this lodge. Worshipful Sir, I take pleasure in presenting to you Worshipful Brother Sharp, who has been duly elected to serve as master of this lodge. Is it known that Brother Sharp is well skilled in our ancient craft? Is he zealous in his regard for the interest of our order? And is he duly qualified to discharge the special duties of the master's chair? It is well known that he is all this, worshipful sir. This certificate vouches for his proficiency is evidence that he is well skilled in our ancient craft. I find him to be good, I find him to be of good morals, true and trusty. And, he, and as he is a lover of the fraternity, I doubt not that he will discharge his duties with fidelity and with honor. Worshipful sir, the brethren of this lodge, reposing confidence in your integrity, in your zealous regard for the interests of masonry, and in your ability to discharge the duties of the master's chair, have chosen you to occupy that honorable position during the ensuing year. Are you willing to accept this important trust? I am. Then my brother, I shall most cheerfully proceed to install you in the dignified and honorable position to which the suffering of your, suffrage of your brethren have called you, not doubting that the dignity of the oriental chair will be well preserved in your keeping and that the interest and welfare of this lodge may be safely confided to your charge. Before commencing your investiture, however, it is necessary that you should signify your assent to those ancient charges and regulations which point out the duties of the master of a lodge and which on no account are ever to be neglected or departed from. They are as follows. <clears throat> you agree to be a good man and true and strictly obey the moral law. You agree to be a peaceful citizen and cheerfully to conform to the laws of the country in which you reside. You promise not to be concerned in plots and conspiracies against government, but patiently to submit to the decisions of the Supreme Legislature. You agree to pay a proper respect to the civil magistrate, to work diligently, live, live credibly, and act honorably by all men. You agree to hold in veneration the original rulers of patrons of the order of masonry and their regular successors supreme and subordinate, according to their stations, and to submit to the awards and resolutions of your brethren when convened, in every case consistent with the constitution of the order. You agree that no, you agree to avoid private peaks and quarrels and to guard against intemperances and excess. You agree to be cautious in carriage and behavior, courteous to your brethren and faithful to your lodge. You promise to respect genuine brethren and to discountenance impostors and all dissenters of the original plan of masonry. 
You agree to promote the general good of society, to cultivate the social virtues, and to propagate the knowledge of the art. You promise to pay homage to the Grand Master for the time being, and to his officers when duly installed, and strictly to conform to every edict of the Grand Lodge or General Assembly of Masons that is not subversive to the principles and groundwork of masonry. You admit that it is not within your power of any man or body of men to make innovations in the body of masonry. You promised a regular attendance on the committees and communications of the Grand Lodge on receiving proper notice and to pay attention to the duties of masonry on convenient occasions. You admit that no new lodge should be formed without permission of the Grand Lodge and that no continence should be given to any irregular lodge or to any person clandestinely initiated therein, being contrary to the ancient charges of the order. You admit that no person can be regularly made a mason in or admitted a member of any regular lodge without previous notice and due inquiry into his character. You agree that no visitor shall be received into your lodge without due examination and producing proper vouchers of their having been initiated in a regular lodge. These are among the ancient charges and regulations of free and accepted masons. And to these, your assent must be freely given. Do you submit to these charges and promise to support these regulations as masters have done in all ages before you? I do. Then my brother, in consequence of this assurance and with full confidence in your capacity and zeal, I will now install you master of San Dimas Lodge number 428. You will now be invested with a jewel of your office. Please put on your jewel. <clears throat> The square, my brother, is an emblem of morality, and it is the especial badge of the master's office. It should be constantly, it should constantly remind you that not only by precept, but by example, you should promote good morals among the brethren, and thus endeavor to avert the shadow of any scandal or reproach against the fraternity. Your former life has given evidence that this jewel will not be an unmeaning symbol in your hands, and I solemnly charge you to take good care of its luster that it not be dimmed by any act of yours. I now present to you the Book of Holy Writings. It is the great light in masonry. It should ever be the great law of the brotherhood. It will guide you in all truth. It will direct you to eternal happiness. An attentive regard to its divine precepts it contains will ensure your success and the fulfillment of the duties that you are about to assume. The working tools of the craft will next be presented to you that as the master workman, you may instruct the craftsmen in the various duties and virtues which they have been selected to illustrate. The square teaches us to regulate our every action and to let our conduct be governed by the principles of morality and virtue. The compass teaches us to limit our desires in every station and to never to suffer our passions or prejudice to become the masters of our judgment. The rule directs the undeviating discharge of all our duties, that we should stress forward in the straight path of right and truth without inclining to the one hand or the other, in all our doings having eternity in view. The plum is an emblem of moral rectitude. It teaches us to avoid all dissimulation and to pursue that honest and upright course of life, which will tend to our evolution, ev elevation in the higher realms of immortality. immortality. There are other great important things which you will receive in charge. This book of constitutions, you are expected diligently to search and from time to time cause its contents to be read in your lodge, that none may go remain ignorant of the precepts it enjoins or of the ordinances which it promulgates. This book contains the bylaws of your lodge, which you are to, which it will be your special duty to see carefully and punctually executed. And this is the charter. Under the authority of which your lodge is held, and which you are carefully to preserve and duly transmit to your successor in the master's chair. For the master of ceremonies, you will conduct the master to a station in the east. Virtual master. 
I congratulate you on your ascension to this time-honored seat. The duties incumbent upon you in this exalted station are fraught with responsibilities. Remember that the honor, reputation, and usefulness of your lodge will materially depend upon the skill and assiduity with which you manage its concerns, and that the happiness of its members will be generally promoted in proportion to the watchful care of which you cherish its genuine, genuine principles of our institution. For a pattern of imitation, consider the great luminary of nature, which rising in the east, regularly diffuses light and luster to all within its circle. In like manner, it is your providence to spread and communicate light and instruction to your brethren. Forcefully impress upon them the dignity and high importance of masonry, and seriously admonish them never to disgrace it. Charge them to practice out of the lodge those duties which they have been taught in it, and by amicable, discreet, and virtuous conduct to convince mankind of the goodness of this institution, so that when a person is said to be a member of it, the world may know that he is one to whom the burdened heart may pour out its sorrows, one to whom distress may prefer its suit, one whose hand is guided by justice, and whose heart is expanded by benevolence. In short, by diligent observance of the bylaws of your lodge, the constitutions of masonry, and above all, the holy scriptures, which are given to us as the rule and guide of our faith, you will be enabled to acquit yourself of the highest honors here, to lay upon a crown of rejoicing, which will continue when time shall be no more. Brother Senior and Junior Wardens, you are too well acquainted with the principles of masonry to warrant any distrust that you will be found wanting in the discharge of your respective duties. Suffice it to say that what you have seen praiseworthy in others, you should carefully imitate. And what in them have appeared defective, you should yourselves avoid. You should be examples of discretion and propriety. For it is only by a due regard for the laws and regulations as shown by your conduct that you can expect obedience from others. You are assiduously to assist the master in the discharge of his trust, diffusing light and imparting knowledge to all whom he shall place into your care. In the absence of the master, you will succeed to higher duties. Your requirements must be therefore such as will ensure proper instruction to the craft. From, this, from the spirit which you have hitherto invented, I entertain no doubt that your future conduct will be such as will merit the applause of your brethren and the testimony of a good conscience. Brethren of San Dimas Lodge number 428. My brethren, such is the nature of our constitution that as some must of necessity, of necessity rule and teach, so must others of course learn to submit and obey. Humility in both is an essential duty. The officers who have been chosen to govern your lodge are sufficiently conversant with the rules and propriety of the laws of our institution to avoid exceeding the power which, with they, which they have been entrusted. And you are of too generous a disposition to envy their preferment. I trust that you will have but one aim, to please one another and unite in that grand design of promoting happiness. Finally, my brethren, as this association has been formed and perfected in so much unanimity and concord, may it long continue. May you long enjoy every satisfaction and delight which friendship can afford. May kindness and brotherly affection distinguish your conduct as men and as masons. Within your peaceful walls, may your children's children celebrate with joy, joy and gratitude the annual reoccurrence of this suspicious solemnity. And may the tenets of our profession be transmitted through this lodge, pure and unimpaired from generation to generation. Worship Master, it now remains for me to present to you the gavel, the emblem of power. In the hands of the Master, to be made of an instrument of great good or greater evil. With the Master, the govern, with it, the Master governs the lodge, and the welfare and prosperity of your lodge, in great measure, depend upon its judicious use. In your hands. I am confident it will be wielded with the best interest of your brethren. Brother Master of Ceremonies, you will not make proclamation.
by order, <clears throat> by order of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of free and accepted Masons of the state of California, I now proclaim the officers of San Dimas Lodge number 428 to be duly installed. All the brethren will, under the direction of the Master of Ceremonies, salute the Worshipful Master by a battery of three times three. Together, brethren. <clears throat> worshipful Master, behold your brethren. Brethren, behold your Worshipful Master. My first order of business after being installed is to introduce the past masters of our lodge. Will all San Dimas Lodge past masters please wave your hand, hands so we can see and recognize you. Thank you all for your past leadership and continued support. I now wish to make my remarks. Uh, I, w I think that went very well. It was our first and hopefully last installation by Zoom. I, I would like to welcome a couple of our guests. Uh, joining us today is very worshipful Tarantino Smith from New York. We are very pleased you have joined us. Also, I'd like to thank and welcome my mother, Lois Scharf, hey. who mastered the technological challenges of Zoom to be with us today. She resides from my home state of North Dakota and without Zoom, she would not be here. So I give her the honorary title of ultra worshipful. So thank you, mom, for being here. You know, I, like so many of you, am glad to see 2020 behind us. You know, one year ago at our last installation, no one could have, no one could have guessed that it would have turned out as it did. Many of our lodge functions were curtailed. I am proud to say, however, that we did accomplish a lot as a lodge, and to that I say thank you. It was challenging and definitely a team effort. 2021 is starting off with the same challenges and it will be important to keep our lodge as a beacon to us all. Things will slowly return to some normalcy. I expect with all the upheaval we have experienced, it will be impossible for us just to flip a mental switch and immediately resume where we left off before the pandemic. I call upon all lodge leaders to step up even more during this crucial period to provide their needed leadership. If we do not, it could be devastating for us as a lodge. We have in, historically enjoyed a very positive reputation and we all want this to continue. In 2020, we emphasized masonry and our lodge facility to remain in everyone's minds. I would like, us, I would like to see us continue with that emphasis we established excellent relationships and partnerships with the city and school district officials and with many other organizations. I would like to see us grow that even further. Our budget for 2021 is set. We will likely experience overall revenue shortfalls as our rentals will continue to be dismal. We will be closely scrutinizing our expenditures I would like us all to think creatively on fundraising activities, and if anyone has ideas, now is the time to bring them forward. I would also like us to grow even more in our brotherhood and friendships. Through our activities, we have been brought closer together. As this year progresses, I look forward to the opportunities of increased brotherhood. Our activities committee will be exploring several ideas and I welcome your input. And finally, I wish to thank my fellow officers. 
like me, almost all agree to serve once again in our elected or appointed positions. We all thank you in confirming our positions for 2021 and are looking forward in providing our sincerest efforts in continuing to grow our Masonic Lodge of San Dimas. With everyone's help, we can all look forward to another excellent year. Thank you, everyone. And that concludes my remarks. <laughs> I would like to thank <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I would like to thank and acknowledge my installation team. I was very happy that each of you accepted my request to be a part. You have all been an important part of my Masonic growth. They are Brothers Jack Rose as installing officer, David Ogle as master of ceremonies, Joseph Musgrove as installing chaplain, and Raymond Foster as virtual coordinator. Thank you all. I realize there was much work in preparation of this event. Your time, efforts, and support are greatly appreciated. Normally, we would have introduction sheets for our dignitaries to sign prior to the start of installation. Because of the pandemic and the necessity to hold this installation by Zoom, introductions will be handled a little differently. Civic leaders, today we have with us two members of the Benita Unified School District Board of Education. They are brothers Derek Bamanu and Greg Pilato. If there are any other civic leaders present, please unmute yourself, identify yourself, in, the pos in your position so we can all recognize you. Thank you for your leadership and community service. Would all Hiram Award recipients please wave your hands so we can recognize you. Thank you. In addition to our past Hiram Award recipients this year, we have a new honoree, Worshipful Brother David Ogle, who is our Hiram Award recipient for this year. Worshipful Dave, please unmute yourself and say a few words to the audience so we can see you. Thank you for this great honor. Thank you all for your continued support. This year's recipient of the Grand Masters Mason of the Year Award is Worshipful Brother Raymond Foster. Yes. Worshipful Raymond, please unmute your, your, yourself and say a few words to the audience so we can see you. I'm busy here. I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> thank you for the honor. And thank you for your continued dedication. I now call on our assistant grand, grand lecturer, Worshipful Brother L. Moen, to continue the introductions. Thank you, Worshipful Master. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the opportunity to make some introductions. And I am supposed to introduce Grand Lodge committeemen and board members. And um, oh my gosh, <laughs> Worshipful Brother Ray, can I ask you to, to put us back on uh, gallery view? That's scary, looking right at myself. Uh, that close up <laughs> that's like uh having the picture up at the post office wall on most wanted <laughs> but thank you um uh, very worshipful jack i did not see any committeemen or constitutional board members uh correct me if i'm wrong but uh just well, me just me i'm on the um on the um leadership the development committee on leadership development committee on leadership development i was going to work that in when i introduced you as a a uh, former elected Grand Lodge officer, but. Oh, that's right, I've already been introduced for that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, see, next I was supposed to introduce um, the inspectors, and I've only seen a couple of inspectors, 
from um, Monrovia, past master of Arcadia Lodge number 272, the inspector of the 729th Masonic District, Worshipful Robert Seacrest. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, sir. 278. And from, oh, where is it? Sorry, uh, I'm looking at my sheet here. This happens when, you, when you're not prepared. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Well, I know, I know your own inspector, <laughs> Alfonso Sanchez from District 723, and I'm sorry, I've lost my place where, where, um, uh, where, where you reside, but uh, Alfonso Sanchez, uh, first person, Alfonso Sanchez, uh, Inspector 723. Thank you. Thank you, most wishful. And next, I am supposed to introduce um, past elected Grand Lodge officers. And of course, uh, even though a very wishful Jack uh, indicated he's already been introduced several times, I'd like to introduce him again as past elected Grand Lodge officer, past Grand Lecturer. Um, uh, my, one of my mentors, a uh, member of the um, Committee on uh, Leadership Development and many, many other things devoted over 25 years of uh, service to Grand Lodge itself and uh, a leader, of course, in, in your lodge. And uh, I'm happy to say he's my friend. Uh, Jack, thank you very much. Thank you, I appreciate it. And uh, lastly, I am supposed to introduce, um, well, uh, past Grand Masters, but I didn't see any past Grand Masters. None. There are none. Uh, then uh, past, not past, I hope not past, <laughs> Grand Lodge officers present. And um, I do see one of our favorite Grand Lodge officers present from Walnut, a past master of San Dimas Lodge, number 428, the Grand Organist, the Worshipful Stephen R. Miller. Thank you, sir. And at this time, if the, the Grand Master uh, is not here, he is um, presiding over another installation. Uh, and Worshipful Master, if I can just uh, say a couple words uh, without introducing myself, if you've introduced me, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I am the AGL Division 7, which San Dimas Lodge is in. Um, I just wanted to congratulate the installing team uh, and say to you, uh, Worshipful Brother uh, Robert Sharp, I didn't know you were from North Dakota. And uh, my, my wife's family is from Grand Forks, North Dakota, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke to anybody from North Dakota or Minnesota. Everything in North Dakota or Minnesota, when you're talking to somebody, you start out by saying, so, Worshipful Sharp, you're from North Dakota, huh? And then it's, don't you know, at the end of everything. So it's wonderful to uh, have you uh, as Master of San Dimas Lodge again. We appreciate that. We know that will help to the stability of, of this year. And as you, I, I hope this is the one and only uh, virtual installation that any of the Masonic Lodges have to do. I do want to commend you uh, and your lodge for all the things you do with your community uh, and your community involvement. I've been aware of the things that um, you've done this year under uh, the circumstances of uh, being quarantined or with the pandemic. Uh, and I would, I know you're doing these things, but I would just want to encourage you to, uh, in this year, 2021, try to continue uh, in your planning to have a Sweethearts event, whether it's virtual or um, doing something like uh, delivering a meal to uh, a widow or, or, you know, recognizing somehow with a card. And I know that we probably won't be able to have public schools observance in April, uh, but I encourage you to try to work something out with the local schools and maybe uh, celebrate a teacher from the different levels and give them a, an honorarium and maybe a certificate of some kind. That would be great. Uh, and I know you also do first responder recognitions and I encourage you to continue to do those sort of things. And I encourage all the brethren to take part in the Masonic education webinars and uh, uh, seminars that are available online through the Grand Lodge. They're doing an excellent job on trying to put together um, information to continue to keep us uh, in, involved and, and together. And, and that's, uh, that's what we need to do uh, and bolster our own spirits during this time. 
And uh, uh, I know that you have your your two members of the board, of school board here, and I congratulate them and, and encourage them to try to stay as active as possible with the lodge. I know how difficult it is to, to have a job and then be a school board member and then try to, to do things in lodge too. And I, I commend you on, on that, uh, that effort. And, I, and lastly, I just want to commend you on your personal commitment to try to continue to keep your lodge together through your stated meeting dinners by delivering the meals to your members and to the community. Uh, uh, that is a wonderful thing that I think your lodge is uh, one and only that I've heard has done that, and, and um, you are to, you're to be commended on, on that. And on behalf of our Grandmaster, Most Worshipful Arthur H. Weiss, I send you his greetings. Uh, he is uh, installing another lodge right now, um, and there is um, hopes that maybe in September that the LA Service Bureau will be able to reorganize the usual Grandmaster's breakfast that we have down at the Hilton, at the Hilton Airport, uh, which may, may come to fruition. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh, and uh, um, there was something else I was, I was gonna say, but it slipped my mind anyway. At last, I just say thank you very much for allowing me to be here. And congratulations to San Dimas Lodge for all the great things that you're doing and continue to do. Thank you, Worshipful Master. Worshipful Master, may I interrupt for a moment? Certainly. I'd like to, uh, to mention one thing. With us today, we have uh, Worshipful uh, Walt Ringwald and his wife, Nancy. And just want to remind everybody that on February 1st, when we have our roll call, uh, Walt will be formally or informally receiving his 70 year pin, which he should have gotten uh, earlier this year for 70 years as a Mason. And I just wanted to let you know that he is on the um, Zoom today. We recognize him and his lady and we want to thank him for his many years of service. And, and we'll be able to send, uh, to send him his pin and, and informally give it to him on February 1st. And I invite everybody to come back then. And lastly, I'd like to also maybe entertain hearing a few words from very wishful Tarantino, who's uh, traveled so far away to be with us in this Zoom. Maybe we can hear a few words from him. Good evening, everyone. Hey. Um, hey. Yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited to be here. Um, um, through, uh, I'm actually low, um, reaching out from everyone now from New York City. Uh, six o'clock in the evening here. Um, so the sun is down. I have the light up right now. But um, thank you, Worshipful Master, and also the brothers of uh, San Dimas Line 428 for allowing me to be here tonight to see this virtual installation. Um, it's really exciting and it went extremely smooth. So I was really excited it's as if you've done this before. Um, <laughs> so hopefully we will never have to do this again. But if so, I know who to check in with uh, to get some bullet points here. And uh, Brother Ross, I was definitely going to reach out to you as well. Um, but thank you for this. Um, through this pandemic, one of the great things that has happened for my lodge is that we were able to reach out and connect with brothers that we haven't seen and or met. And uh, so it's allowed us to reconnect with Brother, of, um, Chave, uh, I'm going to say Chave, but Robert um, uh, Schmidt, and uh, also find out more about our history because I'm from Bunting Charity Lodge 727, which is where he was initiated, passed and raised. Uh, his father was also a, a member of Bunting Lodge. And back uh, 40 years ago, Bunting and Charity Lodge merged and we became Bunting Charity. So we just celebrated our 40th anniversary and uh, we did time capsule and um, Brother Schmidt actually donated some items to go into our time capsule. So although this has been a, a rough year, it has allowed us to reconnect with, uh, with him and a few other brothers who are also in California. And it's been nice learning about our history and their history. And now because of this, I'm meeting all of you brothers. And uh, we've had uh, at least one other brother from your lodge join uh, a Jeopardy game that we were playing one night, which was fun. And um, so this is really exciting to be able to connect with brothers all the way over on the West Coast. So thank you again. Congratulations to all the installing officers. I wish you well this year. And um, may the great architect of the universe guide you all. 
Very worshipful. Uh, when our junior warden informed me that you were going to attend our installation, I was very pleased. Uh, so I'm very happy that you're with us today and you're going to continue to assist us with what Wayne is saying is a very, very fun and lively Jeopardy game that you put together. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Raven and I are going to meet on Tuesday. <laughs> And also before I move on uh, with our agenda here, I also wish to thank Worshipful Moan for joining us. I, I also wanna thank you for the words you gave us, the words of encouragement, uh, the words that we can keep in mind as we continue this year. You know, you mentioned coincidentally, your wife is from Grand Forks, North Dakota. I, I have another coincidental, coincidental thing to mention my mother, who is watching us right now, her maiden name is Moan. So go figure, <laughs> go figure. <laughs> okay, moving on. Where am I? Uh, Worshipful inspector. I now call on our district inspector to recognize and make a virtual presentation to our officer coaches. Thank you, Worshipful. Uh, brother, Worshipful Brother Musgrove and Worshipful Brother Foster. I don't know how we're going to. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I do have a little presentation for you. Here's, here's your certificate, your card. And Brother Foster, here's your card. You are now certified to be officers' coaches. Um, I'm sorry we got we got overwhelmed and we did a hell of a lot this year, uh, not, but I hope that we will be open and we'll be able to uh, be together and together we go forth and um, be able to teach all our officers. Uh, thank you, Worshipful, for having me. Thank you, Worshipful Inspector. Are there any other virtual presentations? Worshipful Master, I have a presentation. <laughs> you did that well. Uh, this looks official. It's my uh, past master certificate that's probably showing backwards on all of your views. Uh, Sean, it's showing correct. It's okay. correct. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much. I actually had to ask our brother Glenn if indeed I was a, a past master and he informed <laughs> me that I am. <laughs> Are there any other presentations? Are there any other presentations? Are there any other presentations? Hearing none. Uh, for my closing remarks on behalf of all the lodge officers, I wish to thank everyone for their attendance today. I had, uh, we had in this installation, virtually speaking, the expected number of glitches they added to the, the levity and the fun of it all, but hopefully this will be our last time doing it virtually. At this time, I call on our installing chaplain to deliver the benediction. Supreme Grand Master, ruler of heaven and earth, now that we are about to separate and return to our respective places of abode, Wilt thou be pleased to so influence our hearts and minds that we may, each one of us, practice out of the lodge those great and moral duties which are inculcated in it, and with reverence study and obey the laws which thou hast given us in thy holy word. Amen.
So that concludes our installation. We can stick around and mingle a bit.